What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over 10 Google Ads optimization tips and best practices for your search campaigns. So I'm going to get right into it. I'm running a search campaign here in my Google Ads account. So this is the campaign I'm going to be using for a lot of my tutorials this year. If you're interested in some more information for how I built this campaign, you can watch my video tutorial here. It's my Google Ads search campaign tutorial, how to create successful search campaigns. I'll link this video in the video description so you can watch it if you want to see how I built this campaign. So now that I've been running the campaign for a little bit, I'm going to go over some of the things that I do to make sure that my campaign is performing as best as possible. So we're going to get right into it. Number one is going to be build an organized campaign from the start. So it doesn't really matter what types of changes you make as you go. If you build a bad campaign when you get started, it's really not going to perform well and it's going to be much more difficult to optimize. So my thinking when I'm building a Google ads campaign is to make sure that my ad groups here match my keywords, match my ads and match my landing pages. So if you see here, I have an ad group for farmhouse curtains. So if I click on this ad group, you can see I'm only bidding on two keywords within this ad group two phrase match keywords. So if we look at the search terms that people are typing in to actually find my advertisements, it's all based around farmhouse curtains. People might be looking for different lengths, different styles, but ultimately they're all looking for farmhouse curtains and most people are just searching this exact match keyword into Google and then they're gonna see my advertisement. So if we look at my advertisements for this individual ad group, you can see here, it's all based around farmhouse curtains. So that's what I mean when you really want things to be organized is when someone types in one of your targeted keywords, you wanna make sure that they're seeing a very targeted advertisement and then when they click through to these landing pages, now I'm actually testing multiple landing pages within this ad group. I'm going to be doing that with all of my ad groups. But if they click through this advertisement, they're either going to come to this page here, which is just a listing of farmhouse curtains, or they're going to come to this page here, which is more of a blog style post with a little bit more inspiration, different types of products, and some different ideas that people can use when they're purchasing curtains for their homes. So you want to make sure that you build a very organized campaign, and that starts with your ad groups. So making sure that your ad groups are all grouped together by theme, making sure that the keywords are all very closely related. So you can see here, I even have different categories for Ray Dunn. This one is exact, so I'm just targeting the exact match version of the Ray Dunn and Ray Dunn pottery keywords. This one is all based around Ray Dunn mugs. This one is around Ray Dunn canisters. So if I click on Ray Dunn mugs for this ad group, you're going to see I'm targeting just one keyword in here. And if we go to ads and extensions, you're going to see I have four advertisements in this ad group as well. And if people click through this landing page, it's going to be a listing of Ray Dunn mugs for sale. So you want to make sure you're giving people a very seamless experience. So when someone types a keyword into Google, you want to make sure that they're seeing an advertisement and then seeing a landing page that's going to closely match that keyword as best as possible. So that's me. Number one is build an organized campaign from the start. It makes it much easier to optimize your campaign as you continue to run it. Next is going to be number two. So if number two, you're seeing this status here limited by budget. This means that you're able to spend more within your campaign based on every setting that you currently have. So the bids that you have set, you're able to spend more every single day. So if I'm limited by budget, what you can do is click here on the budget explorer and it's going to tell you to change your daily budget. So if I have my current budget, this is my weekly conversions, weekly clicks and my weekly cost. So if I'm willing to spend more per week and I'm willing to spend $36 per day, I can just increase my daily budget here and it's going to add more conversions for me. It's going to add more clicks and it'll actually lower my cost per conversion slightly. So I'll still see the same exact performance even with increasing my budget to $36. Now let's just say, for example, I don't want to increase my budget, which I don't. I just want to keep it at $10 per day right now. So we're going to keep it at $10. So what I can do is rather than increasing my budget is coming over to my campaign and going to my keywords and decreasing bids for my keywords. And I would recommend just starting with the keywords that are driving the most impressions for you and driving a good cost per conversion and a strong conversion rate. So if I'm looking right here, this is the exact match keyword for Ray Dunn. This is driving the majority of my clicks and the majority of my impressions for this campaign. So one of the things I can do is just lower my max CPC bid. And if we come over here, you can see I've driven 37 conversions for this individual keyword at a cost per conversion of $1.54. So compare that to farmhouse TV stands, which is much higher here, farmhouse curtains, which is actually much lower. So if I look at some of these different keywords, what I can do is take the conversion right here and take the cost per conversion and use that to guide myself lowering my bids. So with farmhouse TV stands, I can lower this bid because it's really not performing well for me. So we'll go down to 10 cents. 
And then with Ray Dunn, we'll do the same exact thing. We'll just lower all of these bids and I can keep lowering my bids until I reach that perfect point where I'm spending $10 per day, but I'm also driving as many conversions as possible and driving a lot more clicks to my website as well. So lowering your bids can be a great way to handle limited by budget if you don't wanna increase your budget. Okay, next is going to be number three, and we're going to come back over to the campaign screen again. So I went over if you're limited by budget. Now, one of the things you're going to see here is my optimization score. So if I click on my optimization score, one of the recommendations that it's giving me is to change my bidding strategy. So it's telling me to add new keywords here, and then it's telling me I can bid more efficiently with target CPA. So one of the things that you want to do is test bid strategies because one of the main questions I get is what is the best bid strategy? And really, it just depends on the campaign that you're running and your overall goals. Now, for me, I've always seen the best performance starting with manual CPC with enhanced CPC. So what I'm going to do now is come into the settings for my campaign. And if we come down here, you're going to see bidding is set at the campaign level. So right now, my bid strategy is manual CPC and help increase conversions with enhanced CPC and optimizing for conversions. So you saw I just lowered my bids for all of the keywords in my account. So what you can do with manual CPC is have much more control over how much you're bidding for each individual keyword. But one of the things I can do is change my bid strategy and I can come down here to the dropdown and let's just say I wanna use target CPA. It's saying my recommended target CPA is $1.32 based on my past average cost per conversion in this campaign. So I can use this recommendation or I can go slightly lower. We'll go $1.25 and then I can test this bid strategy. So what I would recommend doing is coming back over here, clicking on all campaigns. We're going to continue without saving for now. So I'm still using my manual CPC bidding strategy and you can look at data and let's just say we look at the last 14 days. So you can look at the last 14 days. You can see I've spent $89 and 95 cents, 65 conversions, a dollar and 38 cost per conversion. So I can take those two weeks of data and what you want to do is you want to record this data and then what you want to do is go over to your settings. So clicking on my campaign and then coming into the settings for my campaign and then what you want to do is change your bidding strategy. What I would recommend doing is testing manual CPC using enhanced CPC if you're using conversion tracking. And then if you're using conversion tracking, eventually switching to target CPA and also testing maximize conversions. Now, if you're polling in revenue, then what you want to do is use target return on ad spend and maximize conversion value because that's going to be more focused to driving as much revenue as possible within your budget. So what I can do now is switch to target CPA and go to $1.25, for example, and I can start there and then for the next two weeks, run target CPA, see how my performance is compared to manual CPC, and then I can go over and test maximize conversions. And I can test that for a couple of weeks. And you might notice after a week, or you might notice after several days, that the new bidding strategy is either outperforming or underperforming. And you can always switch back to the other bidding strategy that you're using. Now, I'm most comfortable with manual CPC, especially when I get started with a campaign. But what I eventually do after I test for a month or two is I switch over to target CPA and I try to continue to drive as many conversions as possible within my budget. But with bidding strategies, the only way to know what's going to work best for your campaign is to test. So my general strategy is start with manual CPC, which is what I'm going to keep it at for right now, using enhanced CPC and using conversion tracking. And then I switch to some of these other automated smart bidding strategies like target CPA, target return on ad spend if I'm pulling in revenue, or maximize conversions and maximize conversion value. So test all of them for several weeks, see what performs best for you, see what drives the most conversions, and then continue with that bidding strategy as you move forward. Okay, so number four, we're coming back over to the campaign screen again. What you want to do is add negative keywords constantly to your campaign. So when you set up your campaign, you start getting data. One of the things that you're going to have is if you come here to keywords and we come here to search terms, we can actually see the search terms that people are typing in to trigger our advertisements. So you can see Ray Dunn is the main search term that's driving the majority of my clicks. So that's why I got to lower that bid and I can even keep decreasing that bid so I can start getting clicks from some of these other keywords a little bit more. So what we can do is if you start scrolling down, you want to look for keywords based on the intent of what people are looking for. So as I scroll down here, some of the things I try to do is find exactly what people are trying to look for when they do click on my advertisements. So one of the examples right here is redo Barstool's farmhouse. 
So that's someone who's probably looking for projects for how to redo their farmhouse bar stools. So someone who might be looking to put new fabric on their bar stools, maybe they're looking to add a fresh coat of paint to them or whatever it is, what they're looking for is how to redo a bar stool in their home. Now, if I keep scrolling down, you can see there's another one here, DIY farmhouse TV stand. So looking at some of these different things that people are typing in, I don't want anybody who's looking for DIY projects or people who are looking to refinish or redo anything for their house. House, I want people who are looking for new products to purchase for their homes. So what we can do is instead of coming here to search terms, go to negative keywords. You can also click on an individual search term, for example, and add it as a negative keyword in the search terms report. But what I like to do is we're just going to go right to negative keywords. We're going to click on the plus sign and I can add negative keywords or create a new list. So I'm just going to add some negative keywords to the campaign level. And let's just say finish. So people who are looking to finish their bar stools, finish a piece of furniture, DIY, people who are looking for DIY projects or some DIY inspiration, redo. So the exact keyword that someone typed in was redo bar stool farmhouse. And then the last one that I'm gonna add is refresh. So I'm just gonna add these four negative keywords. Now, if you add a negative keyword like this, this means that if anybody types in DIY with their search term, they're not gonna see my advertisements or any of these other terms here. Now, for example, let's just say I wanted to add DIY project. What I would recommend doing is adding a phrase match negative keyword. So that means if someone's looking for a DIY project, then you can make sure that you're excluding that entire search term from your campaign so that your ads are never going to show and someone's looking for DIY projects. But for this DIY, finish, redo, refresh, these are all going to be good negative keywords for my campaign because I want people who are actively looking to purchase something new for their home. So we're gonna save, we're gonna add these negative keywords. So that's one of the best ways to keep your campaign optimized is to always look in your search terms report and make sure that your search terms are as relevant as possible. So I'm really happy with all the search terms that are in here for the most part, but if you keep scrolling down, you're always gonna find some different ideas. Sometimes you might find people who are looking up Amazon or Home Depot or specific stores. You can exclude those stores if you want to. People who are looking for specific brands, if you don't carry those brands, then I would exclude them from your campaign. Okay, so now for number five, we're looking at my list of ad groups. I'm gonna go over some different ad group ideas when you're trying to optimize your campaign and really optimize your individual ad groups. So we're gonna come in here to Farmhouse Curtains again. I'm gonna keep using this as my example for the video. So if we come in here, one of the things you wanna do is come over to Audiences and a best practice is to add audiences to the ad group level. So right now I have them added to the campaign level and one of the things you're able to see is if you have your audiences added to the campaign level, you can see how they're actually performing for your campaign. So right now I have this home and garden home decor in market audience for my entire campaign, but a better practice is to come in here and add audiences to the ad group level. Once you add them to your ad group level, then it's going to remove the campaign audience targeting. So you want to remove the campaign audience targeting first. So we're going to come over to our campaign. I'm going to take this audience targeting and now you can see how this is performing. So people who are in this home decor in market audience, I've spent $58 and 27 cents on them, 42 conversions, a dollar and 39 cost per conversion. Now my, the cost per conversion for my campaign is a dollar 38, but I'm also bidding higher, 25% higher for people who are in this in market audience. Audience targeting is gonna allow you to reach a better audience, especially if you start using some of your retargeting audiences, which I'm gonna show you right now. So we're gonna remove these from the campaign level and we're gonna start adding them to our ad group level. So permanently remove them. And we're gonna come back over to our ad groups and we're gonna go into our farmhouse curtains ad group again. And what we wanna do is again, come down to audiences and click here to add a new audience to the ad group level. I always recommend using observation. Targeting is gonna narrow your reach to those specific audiences when they search your search terms. Observation allows you to bid higher or lower without narrowing the reach of your ad group. I'm in my curtains ad group, so what I can do is search here for curtains. So we're gonna see if there's any in-market audiences, so perfect, curtains and window treatments. We'll take this one, add it to our ad group level, click on save. Okay, so what we're able to do is bid slightly higher to people who are in the market for curtains and window treatments when they search our farmhouse curtains keywords. So you know you're reaching a really targeted audience. So let's just take our bid adjustment, we'll increase it by 15%. So that's fine for right now. You can always increase it higher as you get more data here, like you can see above. Now the other thing you can do is to take it a step further is to add one of your remarketing audiences based on some of the pages that people have visited on your website. So maybe what I want to do is use this all users 540 days audience. So we'll come here to the ad group level again, observation. 
come to browse and you can see these are all the different options we have to add to our search campaign, remarketing and similar audiences, in-market audience combinations. I don't really ever use detailed demographics or affinity audiences. I try to stick to these down here. So we'll click right here to remarketing website visitors, all users 540 days and click on save. So now we have that added to the ad group level along with curtains and window treatments in our curtains ad group. To take it a step further, we're going to come over here to Google Analytics and what you can do is create audiences in your Google Analytics account. And as long as you have your Google Ads account linked to your Google Analytics account, which I do, then you're able to create audiences and publish them directly to your Google Ads account. So I can create a new audience here and you can use any of these different options, but I'm going to do users who visited a specific section of my website audience name, I'm going to do curtains and we're just going to do 60 days. So anybody who's been to any of these pages over the last 60 days, if they're still looking for curtains, they're still searching farmhouse curtains keywords. I want to make sure they see my advertisements. So we'll do curtains and we're going to click here. It's going to say page contains and there's just a slash here. All I need to do is add the word curtains. So this is going to count for this page, for this page, for this page. It is also going to work for shower curtains. That's fine. But what I can do is page contains curtains or page contains drapes. So that's gonna count this page, all of my farmhouse drapes pages, or, and I'm gonna use valences. So these are all very similar farmhouse valences. Now, last but not least, I can come to or again, and I can do window treatments. Okay, so page contains curtains, drapes, valences, or window treatments. So you can see I have or in here. Click on apply, and we'll see over the last seven days, I've had 754 people visit these pages. So now I can click on next step, and I can publish this audience directly to my Google Ads account, my Google Analytics account, and what we're gonna do is click on publish. Okay, so now I'm able to use this in my Google Ads account. So if I come back over to audiences, we click, we're adding it to the ad group level, we're here in observation, I can click on browse, come down to remarketing and similar audiences, website visitors, and our curtains audience is right here, the one that we just created. So it's showing size zero because it's still populating. So we're gonna click here, and now if anybody is on our all users 540 days audience, our curtains audience, or in this in-market audience, we can bid higher. So let's just say we're gonna set these this bid at 20% for anybody who's visited our website. And then for this one right here, and it's saying too small to target for Google properties, I need to have at least 1,000 active members. As soon as this continues to populate, it's a 60 day audience, I should be able to have a large enough audience to bid higher, so we're gonna increase it by 25%. Click on save. So this is a best practice for your campaigns, especially if you're getting a lot of traffic to your website, then you're gonna have a large pool of people who are gonna be searching your targeted keywords and you can bid higher on them to make sure they visit your website. It works really well in competitive industries. So now anybody who's visited these pages or is in this in-market audience is gonna be more likely to see my advertisement. Okay, so next is gonna be number six. And number six is in every single ad group for your campaign, you should have at least one expanded text ad and at least one responsive search ad. So for this, I have two expanded text ads and two responsive search ads in all of my different ad groups. So that's four total advertisements per ad group, but I only have two unique advertisements in here. So number six is to make sure you at least have one expanded text ad and one responsive search ad in every single ad group for your campaign. And that's gonna take me right into number seven. So with number seven, what I've done is I created my one expanded text ad, one responsive search ad, and then I duplicated each advertisement and I'm sending people to different landing pages. So one of my landing pages, like I showed before, is just a listing of products. So it's a shop page. So people come here, they can scroll down, they're just seeing a listing of products, all farmhouse curtains. The other page is a blog post. So this one has a lot of the same products on the page, but I also have some inspirational pictures. I have some more ideas about how to choose farmhouse curtains. What are the different themes and styles? So this, these pages tend to do better for SEO and my shop pages tend to do better for Google ads and pay-per-click advertising, but it's not the same across the board. So what I've done is I've taken my expanded text ad. This one goes to one landing page and this one goes to the other landing page. I've taken my responsive search ad, duplicated it, same exact advertisement, but they just go to separate landing pages. So number seven is if you do have one expanded text ad, one responsive search ad, and you have multiple landing pages you can test, one of the best ways to increase campaign performance is to just duplicate those advertisements 
And then what you want to do is just change those landing pages because what Google Ads is going to do is serve the top performing advertisements. So whichever are driving cost per conversion at the lowest rate. So for example, this advertisement is going to continue to serve more and more and you're going to see it has the most impressions and that's most likely because the conversion rate is the best and the cost per conversion is the best. So the ads that drive the lowest cost per conversion are going to be more likely to be served over time. So even if you have duplicate advertisements with different landing pages, Google ads will serve whichever advertisements are driving you conversions at the lowest cost. Okay, so now number eight, to continue on our advertisements, use ad group level ad extensions. So you can see right now, I have different site link extensions that are added to my ad group level for farmhouse curtains. So you can see shop curtains, farmhouse drapes, valences, farmhouse curtains, and then the farmhouse goals shop. So these are all ad group level. So you can see level ad group. So all of my site link extensions for this ad group are set here. So even if you have campaign level ad extensions, you should still set up ad group level ad extensions because they take precedence. And if you can create different site links and call outs and structured snippets, even call extensions or price extensions that enhance your existing ad group, then you want to make sure you're adding them to your ad group level. I would say this is one of the things that takes a lot of time as you're building large campaigns, but now I can come down here to my call out extensions, top rated curtains, drapes and balances, hundreds of farm curtains, curtains start at $13. Structured snippet, I have some different styles that people can find, buffalo check, modern, ruffled, blackout and rustic. So all of these are gonna enhance my advertisements because when people are searching for farmhouse curtains, they're also gonna see extensions that match farmhouse curtains. So if you come here to the plus sign, most of these different extensions can be added to the ad group level. So I can use price extensions and show individual products. You can use call extensions for your ad groups. Now lead form extensions are only used at the campaign level. So you're not able to add everything to the ad group level, but site links, call outs, and structured snippets. If you're able to enhance an ad group, then make sure you're using ad group level ad extensions. Now, number nine and 10 are going to be all about keywords and they work hand in hand. So number nine is going to be as you start to get more data and you want to expand your campaign, what you can start doing is adding more keywords to your ad groups. So you can see here, I'm in my farmhouse curtains ad group still. So if we click on the plus sign, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up some of the most relevant keywords here on the right hand side. So what I can do is add some of these different options here. And we'll say, I'm already bidding on a couple of these, but let's just say country curtains, say farmhouse kitchen curtains, and we'll do primitive country curtains. So these are all relevant keywords for my campaign. So if I wanted to expand my campaign, what I would do is add all these keywords. I would use phrase match keywords. I don't recommend just using broad match keywords. So broad match keywords would be if I enter these with no quotes, with no plus signs. So with phrase match keywords, I put quotes around this. Anytime someone types this phrase into Google, it'll trigger my advertisements. So what I can do is add all of these directly to my ad group. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just showing you some examples of what you can do. So one of the things Google ads is going to do is they're going to give you different ideas on the right hand side. So if I click on cancel here, we'll come back over to our campaign and let's just say we come to our optimization score again. It's going to usually tell you to add keywords over time. So it's going to say show your ads more often to people searching for what your business offers. So I would recommend viewing these recommendations, but don't just add everything, look at them one at a time. So this is telling me to add rustic shower curtains and farmhouse shower curtains to this curtains ad group. I would not recommend doing that. So you can always come in here and just dismiss these options. It's telling me to add a farmhouse sign, the exact match keyword to my ad group. So what I'll do is I'll take this one and we'll apply. So for number nine, it's to always look through these recommendations, see if there's any keywords that are good to add to your campaign. So for example, something like country primitive curtains, if I wanted to expand a little bit for my campaign, then I would add this keyword. Since I have such a small budget and I'm already reaching my budget without a problem, I'm not gonna add any more keywords that are gonna make it a little bit more irrelevant for my campaign. But that's gonna bring me into number 10. So for number 10, what I like to do is look at the recommendations that Google ads is giving me. So for example, here, rustic curtain rods, look at some of these recommendations and also coming into my keywords and looking at my search terms report. And specifically what I'll do is I'll come to farmhouse curtains and I'll look at my search terms report for farmhouse curtains. And you can see here, if I'm looking at impressions, one of the things is farmhouse curtain rods. So I can use this keyword to create a new ad group. And what it allows me to do is not only create a new ad group to make sure I'm sending people to the best landing page for farmhouse curtain rods, but on my website, I only have a selection of farmhouse drapes, 
farmhouse valances and farmhouse curtains right here. So to enhance my own website, to enhance my search engine optimization strategy, what I can do is add farmhouse curtain rods to my website. I can use that to not only create a new ad group around farmhouse curtain rods, but I can start driving some SEO traffic to that page. So that's something that I need to do is create that page for my website. So one of the things you can do as you're optimizing your campaign is just open up Notepad or open up Microsoft Excel for your existing keyword list and just make a list of some of the keywords that you wanna to add to your campaign or some of the keywords that you can add to enhance your website. So I can add this to my SEO keyword list, Farmhouse Curtain Rods, and then I can also use it as one of my ad extensions. So I can use it as a site link in that ad group. I can create a brand new ad group for farmhouse curtain rods. So it gives me a lot of different ideas for my website, allows me to expand my campaign, and hopefully helps me drive more search engine traffic as well. So these are 10 different Google Ads optimization tips. So I would recommend going through your optimization score, some of these recommendations. I need to do this. My optimization score dropped down below 70% again. So sometimes it's just dismissing some of the optimization ideas they give me. But going through each of these individual ideas, from bidding strategies to lowering your bids for your campaign, adding keywords to ad groups, making sure your responsive search ads, expanded text ads, making sure you're testing your landing pages, Ultimately, a good Google Ads campaign comes down to organizing your ad groups and testing your advertisements, testing keywords, testing landing pages, and using conversion tracking to see what is driving conversions for your business. So you can go through each of these individual ad groups, see what's driving conversions, see what's driving conversions at the lowest cost, and it's always going to help you expand your campaign and then find ideas for optimization opportunities. So I can even come here and pause this Farmhouse TV Stands ad group because it's performing way less than some of these other ad groups here. However, for now, I'm okay with testing this a little bit more. But those are 10 different optimization tips for Google Ads. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thanks for watching my video today.